to understand anything about computers, it's a good idea to start with binary. The reason being that binary is the number system that computers use to represent the everyday numbers that we use as humans. The number system that you probably use now is called decimal or denary. Okay? It consists of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Okay? And also the absence of any number is a 0. So, if we've got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then it means we've got 10 digits. That's why this is called a base 10 number system. Okay, so this is decimal, it's a base 10 number system, and it's the one that we use every day. The theory behind it is that the reason we use 10 is because we've got 10 fingers and 10 toes, and this is how we started counting as a species. The problem is that when we started using computers, we realized that computers can't really understand any of these numbers. Well, they can. They can understand two of them here. Computers can only really understand these two. And the reason is that computers are made up of tiny little switches called transistors, which can either be in the on or the off position. The off position is a zero, and the on position, obviously, a one. It's exactly the same as your light switch at home. It can either be off or it can be on. The problem that we've got with that is that we need to somehow use this to represent these numbers here. Okay, so the way we're going to do that is we line up all of our binary numbers and we make each one of them represent a different amount. All right, I'll show you what I mean. So the amount that we're going to have here, the amount of binary numbers is going to be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The reason we're going to use 8 is that this is a unit called a byte. Whenever you see eight bits together, these individual things are called bits. They make up one whole, which is called a byte. It's the same concept as a centimeter and a hundred of those making up a meter. Okay, this is just a unit of bits called a byte. Right, this one on the right hand side, we're going to represent one. The one to the left of it is going to represent two. The one to the left of that is going to represent 4, and you might notice a pattern. All that's happening is that we're doubling this every time. Okay? We're going to stop at the end of the byte, which is represented by 128. We could theoretically go as far as we wanted. So, these numbers here are what each one of these represents in this position. It's in exactly the same concept as, let's say, we've got the decimal number 121. This represents 1, this represents 20, and that represents 100, as in your hundreds, tens, and units that you learned when you were in primary school. So it's the same concept here, that as we move up towards the left, they represent different numbers. Okay? So, the way that we're going to represent a number, let's say we want to represent the number 20 using binary. All we do is we just take the 4 out and we take the 16 out and we replace the zeros with 1s. And now as you can see, because we're using a 16 and we're using a 4, we use 16 plus 4 to get 20. Oops, that's a strange 0. I think I was half going for an 8. Right. So, if a computer receives this bit of data here, or possibly just this bit, because as with decimal, any zeros to the left don't really mean anything. If it receives this bit of information here, then it would read it as being 20, because it's got a 16 and it's got a 4. Okay, let's have a look at another example. So, let's say that we've got, we'll take the more than one, more than two this time. We'll take the one, we'll take the four, and we'll take the eight. I'm not going to write anything here just to show that you don't have to have zeros here. It's still going to represent the same amount. You can put as many zeros as you want up here. It's not going to change this number. Only zeros to the right will change the number exactly as it is with decimal. So here we've got an eight, we've got a four, and we've got a one. We just add those together and we get 
13. An easy way to check whether you've got the same answer, let's say you're in an exam and you're in a bit of a rush and you're just trying to get this question done. An easy way to check or at least eliminate a 50% possibility of getting it wrong is to check that number on the end. If you've got a number on the right hand side, if you've got a one on the right hand side of a binary number, your answer must be odd because all of the other numbers are even and if you add an odd number there, it makes it an odd number. If we take this out, then obviously we've got 12, so it's an even number. So anytime you see a one on the right hand side, it means that we've got a odd number, okay? So, you might think, how on earth am I gonna re um, remember these? Remember, all you have to do is start with a one on the right hand side and just double them each time, okay? As long as you can double something, then you can't really go wrong. You might occasionally just forget and accidentally put 127 there, but you just need to be very careful and make sure that you're doubling these numbers and eventually it becomes second nature because you've done it so many times. So let's get rid of all of this. Let's use that. And let's just say we've got the number 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. Okay, so we put the numbers above it. 1, 2, I'm just doubling them each time. 4, 8, and 16. Okay. You don't have to have eight, it's just that eight is called a byte, okay? We can, of course, have as many as we want. We've got five here. So, to figure that out, we put 16 plus eight. We miss out this one because we've got a zero underneath it, plus two, and we miss that one out there, okay? So there we've got 16 plus eight, which is 24, plus two, which is 26. So that number, if you ever see that, in binary or if a computer sees that then it counts it as being 26. Just one more quick tip about working these out. Let's say in the exam that you're sitting in or if you're working with binary numbers and you push for time for whatever reason then you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, you might think that this is going to take a long time to work out because I've got to add all of these up. I'm going to miss this zero, then I'm going to add that one, and it's going to take quite a while if we don't have a calculator. Even with a calculator, I've got to add all these in. Well, it's much easier than that because all you have to remember is one more piece of information, which is, let me just put these on here, 16, 32, 64, 120. Eight, right all of these numbers added together make 255 255 is the biggest number that can re be represented with one byte you might have seen that before in computers um, the reason you see it so many times is that it's the maximum number that can represent it with one byte so if we rem remember that all of these added together make 255 then if we have most of them as ones and only couple them as zeros then all we do is we just remove the number that is above from 255. So we know that this answer here must be 253 because we've got every number apart from the two. Exactly the same if we removed that one as well and we had that as a zero, then it would be 255 minus eight, okay, minus two. So 255 minus eight, which is 247, and then a 2 as well, so it'd be 245. So if you've got lots of 1s and not many zeros, then that's probably a better idea. So just to recap, binary is a number system that is made up of only zeros and 1s. The way that we get decimal numbers from this is that we use each one of these in order to represent a different decimal number. The 1 on the right always represents a 1, after that, we just double it every time. If there is a 1 underneath that number, we put, we add it to our total. If there isn't a 1, we don't add it to our total. So let's say we've got 1, 0, 0, 0 there. Then we know that this binary number must equal 8 because it's got nothing in the 1, it's got nothing in the 2, it's got nothing in the 4, it's got nothing in the 8. One more. 1, 0, 1, 0 must represent 10 because 
okay, and that's a decimal number, even though it's only got a 1 and a 0, I'm talking about decimal 10, it must represent 10 because we've got 1, 2, 4, and 8, and 8 plus 2, the ones with the ones underneath them are 10, okay, so that's it.